Hi, my name's Meredith Mustard. I am talking to you from Two Imagine Studios in Farmington, Maine. Today I'm going to be demonstrating printing from laser printouts from a laser printer. And these are a couple prints that I made recently from laser prints, uh, the image transfers. And so let me just say, hi, um, I'm gonna get right to work once I show you around. Here we go, so that's some of the stuff. I'm gonna show you how I set up. I keep a pile of white paper. Often it's printed on the back, but I, I can use the side. I use also sheets that I've already printed a color on. So I have a pile of light colored and then a pile of black and darker colored right within reach of where I'm working. Um, I also have a Brayers, a Baron, and a lot of papers, miscellaneous papers that I can roll off my brayer and clean it with. Paints, um, these are laser prints that I'm going to do transfers from, so I have them laid out where I can reach them. And these are the plates that I'll be working on. So let me get that set up right here. so it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so um, first thing you wanna know is there are sort of two directions one can go when printing uh, jelly transfers. One is to make a print and, and then transfer it onto a, a printed, a painted sheet that I showed you over there. And that's what I'm gonna do first, show you how that works. I am going to print, take a chance at transferring this image onto um, this jelly plate and then onto the paper. So since this is a fairly light color that I'm gonna be putting it onto, I'm gonna make this a contrasting darker color. I'm gonna use some alizarin crimson hue. I'm gonna mix two colors. Um, I think sometimes that makes it more interesting. And turquoise. So here's how I do it. I usually roll out the lighter color first and then the darker color. That keeps the lighter color fairly clean. Uh, of course, see, now I've mixed it enough that it's all going to be pretty dark. Now I'm going to clean off the brayer onto the roll-up sheet and take my laser print, lay it down here, and one of the things that I've done is I've put the paint on fairly heavy. And here's what I've gotten from it. Not a lot. The darkest parts are going to come. Now I'm taking my painted sheet. I'm going to put it right down on here while the paint is still wet. And use a barren to really press it. So it makes really good contact. And the paint will tend to lift the painted image off the plate. Because this paint is attracted to paint. And so this is what I've gotten from that. There's two colors going on here. Um, I'm gonna add some type to it. Now this is some writing that um, someone I know, someone I know very well, um, wrote during a bout of schizophrenia. So it's really interesting, interesting writing. And um, let's see, I'm gonna do a different color. It needs to be a dark color. Quinta Crickadone. I never say what that, how to pronounce that color. Um, magenta. And when I do these, when I do these, I use uh, the paint fairly thick 
And the best thing to transfer, I have to say, is tape because it's it's just high contrast. Um, so I'm putting that on the more empty side of this sheet. And here we go. So I have the writing and you can actually read it. And these two little images, the bird and the caterpillar. And that's, I'm gonna call that a done deal. Um, now my plate is a little bit mushy. So this is where I do a cleanup. And what I'll do is just put a color onto here all over the plate. I don't do it super light. I don't do it super thick. Something in between. Turn the brayer off. Got a white piece of paper. Now this is white on this side. I have something on the other side. And I often have stuff printed on two sides. Some things might get matted and framed. But a lot of the sheets will go into uh, an art journal. And so having on both sides is just perfect. Now that I've cleaned off the plate with that and I can print something onto this at a later date, maybe even soon. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is this was a collage that I did and it was smaller than this. I photographed it, blew it up, and then I worked in the computer to edit it to bring the blacks up to increase the contrast. And I'm going to print this one onto a white sheet and I'll show you this process. Let's see what color I can do. I can choose to do any color with this. Um, teal prints really well. It does really nice transfers. Here we are, this level of teal, and the teal is also uh, very opaque, and I think that helps too. All right, now I'm gonna put the image down onto the plate very lightly. Just wanna make sure it makes contact. And I can go back if there's some little wet spots that I don't like what they look like, but there we go. And I'm going to print it on two. Oh. oh no. Now this time I'm not printing it onto a color. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. And I'm gonna put the contrasting color right onto it. So while that's drying, because it can dry pretty thoroughly. <clears throat> if I put the next layer of paint on when this is still wet, they'll kind of mix together. And um, that's not quite as fun. So meanwhile, this is another collage that I did. So this is my artwork. I get double, double mileage out of it by doing it again. And let me see, I'm gonna try Printing it in red, cadmium red, medium. I've had some pretty good luck with this color. Different colors seem to um, work in different ways. I just don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, so I've experimented and fooled around with a lot of different colors and I sort of reach for things that I know will work now. Okay, so here we go. This one I am going to put right on to another sheet. onto the pink. Pink and red. Oh, I could have done it on the back of this one too. That would have been really interesting. I don't want to make 
good contact and pick up as much of that color as I can. So that's what I got. It gives me some really nice stuff. I can now go back in and transfer something, a uh, picture out of a magazine or some other source right on top of this. I love doing layered, layered look. Let me see. Okay. Here's something we could put onto it. I'm going to clean this plate off a little bit. Sometimes I don't do that. I lift it off with another color paint. But I'm not feeling like doing that right now. So here we go. Now, I think what I'm going to do is, this is... Color. It will show up on that red. Oh boy, a lot of stuff stuck on my brayer. is where the toner is on the paper it resists picking up the paint and that's the paint that stays on the plate and makes the transfer image this is unusual to be able to put this much pressure on we'll see if it really breathes when it comes across you can read the end is often the beginning what feels like the end it's a little bit hard to read um, so if I wanted to make this a real print that's really successful I would make several copies of each piece and then keep trying until I got the balance just right in the color um, otherwise this can also be a background sheet that I can print more stuff over in a contrasting color now this one has been sitting here and we're now going to add a color. And I think what I'm gonna add is a Stalluride yellow, which will be a nice contrast. And then we'll print it on a plain white sheet of paper. Sometimes I got a little piece of dust or something on the brayer and it leaves a mark. There it is. I don't like that. Paper. Oh, that's another one that's printed on the back, but white clean on that side. So I have lots of prints that don't work out the way I want them. This was um, two images from laser printouts. And um, I didn't like how they came out, so print on the back of them. So here is that that original image. What gets in the way is the way. Um, so those are the, the two basic techniques for using your laser prints. And uh, the secret to it, I find, is to take your photograph, manipulate it to high contrast, and increase the black point when you when you edit it. That'll make the blacks as black as you can possibly get them. And I think there's probably even something else to do to drop out this gray color that often shows up on the back in the paper. And I think if you're good with Photoshop, you can get rid of that. I do not use Photoshop, so I'm just working with the regular photo edit programs. Um, this was a, a photograph that I took in the fog, which is also really nice for isolating an image in nature 
um, because the background then drops out with the fog and you can get a much better silhouetted kind of high contrast image that works well with transferring from um, laser prints. And I think that is, let me see, about all I have to say today. And I hope you can see me because I'm holding the camera backwards. Um, stay tuned and I will do the next video I want to do is to show all the different kinds of ways that I have used my laser print, or not my laser prints, my image transfers and my jelly prints. Um, because, you know, once you have hundreds of them, you need to find an outlet for them. So stay tuned for that. I'll talk to you later. Bye.